welcome to this AR presentation and uh, thank you very much AR for giving me opportunity to speak about installation of walls and controls. Uh, my presentation is big, big, so I will try to put it into the time given to me. Ek Vaidani Chetani, this presentation ke sare photo, atra saal aur uske upar ke logon ke liye hai. Apart from jo, this, uh, there are a lot of photos I use to try to see what mistakes happen or what wrong things go on. It is not to promote or demean any plant, brand or any product or the brand. It is just for the sharing the information. So please do not use these photographs for any business or any promotional use. Uh, this is just for the training purpose. So uh, what happens is here in uh, reparation plant, we have different types of controls which are used or walls are used like the stop walls, regulating walls, check walls, non-written non walls, control level control systems, solenoid walls, motorized walls, safety walls. Many, many walls and controls are used. Just a list of it, uh, of these things. Then along with those, uh, uh, what we call as the electromechanical or the mechanical uh, walls, we also have the electronic controls which actually operate these walls. So what we have to look out is how all these things can be installed. It's it, if you consider all these types of products, the presentation will become a little big. So I will try to squeeze in and try to cover a maximum possible products. So let's start with the actual uh, topic. So first, when we talk about standard precautions or safety precautions, Veronica said talked a lot about safety. So when we talk about the plant installation or the maintenance safety, First thing is that the, your refrigeration plant must be kept free of any foreign members. Foreign member means dirt, grit, rust, impure oil, wax, sludges, water, air, debris. These are all not required in our ammonia. What we need in our ammonia refrigeration in ammonia side is pure 99.95% pure ammonia. All these things are not required. This chokes your strainers, filters. You can see here. So please keep your plant free, free of all these things. Follow proper maintenance of these components regularly. As Granny Kassar has given us maintenance schedules, details about it. So you make sure that along with the major equipments, keep the same for your components also. The people who are working on this must be well trained and supported by the others. Not Typically only one person should not attend uh, uh, one problem or training the oil or uh, removing the filters, there should be a support person available so that in case of an incident, another person can jump in and uh, put out or help the person. Do not remove any parts or open any parts without uh, when they have pressurized systems. It has to be below the uh, zero D, uh, zero pressure so that if there is any refrigerant packed in, it should not come out. It should not come out on you or your hand or I have seen in many places People try to use screwdriver to push the wall the spindle, the wall the cap up or remove it and the ammonia leaks and it burns the just code injuries on the hand or the face. Any abnormal sounds, uh, noise coming up into your plant, maybe into the ammonia pumps or your fans or the hydraulic uh, knocking sounds coming up, it must be immediately attended and corrected. Do not run the plant when this kind of sounds are observed. This will lead to mostly the liquid hammer and the stops uh, due to that. When uh, installing walls and control walls bonnets, the bolts must be properly taught and it should be followed as per the uh, guidelines given by the manufacturer. We'll see more about this each things in next uh, after during uh, during the presentation. Particularly, if there is a failure in the comp uh, any component or any pro any equipment, do not just replace it. Please try to find out the reason of failure, particularly when this failure has caused any damage to the property or to the person. Uh, make sure that the reason is found out and sorted out. Very typically, when there is a coil burn out in the solenoid, people simply replace the solenoid coil. Don't do that. Try to open the solenoid, clean it. You may find there is a lot of dirt into it because of which the plunger was stuck into the tube and coil is burning frequently. So if you replace just a coil, it will burn again. This is a small example. 
So try try to uh, make sure that the when there is a failure, the failure cause is uh, analyzed, and then only the component or the product of the system is replaced or repaired. Then each component has a life expectancy. When we use our cars, normally most of the most of us replace the car in five years. We service our car maybe now the earlier it used to be three or four months. Now we service five thousand kilometers. Same thing is applicable to our refrigeration plant. Now remember, a car we don't drive 24 hours. Maybe like we are going to office or factory in the morning, we are driving a car for 30 minutes or 40 minutes, and we are going back to home again. We are driving 30, 40 minutes, and we still maintain it properly. When you look out in a refrigeration plant, most of the time the plant is running 24 hours, 365 days. So find out to what is the life expectancy of the plant. Do not expect your ammonia plant to last for 65 years. I have seen some cold storages, uh, sir knows better, where they say that my cold storage was built by my grandfather and I am running the same plant. So they expect that plant which was uh, created in maybe 1970s to still run it today. So it never, it never happens like that. Brunica sir has already told a lot about it. So make... Uh, sir? Uh, so, uh, understand the life expectancy, typically 20 years should be your life expectancy of your plant. After that, you must periodically change uh, check the thicknesses of the pressure vessel pipes, insulation and repair, replace them as required. And uh, as our Gurani Kaptar has given more details, but all the, not only the mechanical, but the electrical, electronic parts, components must be inspected annually or sometimes, uh, you know, Personally, like if you have a pressure gauges in your plant, I will recommend check it every quarterly or every six months. Because it is one of the uh, most uh, uh, item to fail or generate uh, errors uh, in the plant. We will see uh, how it happens. So, make sure that they are periodically checked, calibrated and in case required, replaced. Uh, avoid liquid expansion or liquid hammer. What happens is, is that if the ammonia liquid, particularly expanded liquid, get traps into the uh, line or your, there is like for example from ammonia uh, pump outlet line to your cold storage line, uh, there is uh, no safety between the two lines and your pump has stopped and your liquid line solenoid wall has also stopped into the solenoid, uh, uh, into the evaporator. It means that that liquid line is full with the ammonia liquid. Now, if there is a slight increase in the temperature, just by one degree into that liquid line, your pressure will shoot up like anything. You can see here the pressure gauge has gone out. It has crossed 300 psi and has gone out. So, what happens is here it generates the liquid expansion or what we call as a liquid hammer. And it will cause rupture damages to the, your pipes will damage first, your walls controls which will get damaged immediately. You can see here how the walls are damaged. So make sure that there is a sufficient safety, maybe you know like this line, liquid line is connected with uh, your pump vessel uh, with the pressure relief wall or regulating wall then uh, done or any, any safety required should be properly uh, followed. This is very very important, most probably uh, people forget about uh, liquid expansion safety in uh, making the plant or because many times the plants are built by the uh, the local uh, welders contract plus who are not expertise, they have seen few plants built up and they just copy the designs. So those things must be avoided immediately. Relief devices must be uh, installed on all the pressure vessels. They must be regularly or semi-annually inspected for rust, corrosion. Many times we leave our safety wall outlet open on the outside, outlet side. So there is a possibility of rust, water or even uh, small birds getting into the safety wall, uh, particularly on the uh, condenser side and then it prevents the operation of the wall. So these devices must be regularly inspected and uh, as per now AR standard, this uh, rip devices must be replaced with every 5 years or at least uh, every year you should calibrate them, service them. And then make sure that uh, velocity shocks uh, are avoided. That is means when there is a sudden change in the uh, operation of the wall or the bigger line walls are there, like you are implementing hot gas defrosting, your weight return solenoid walls, 
operating in big way, bigger walls, that should be avoided. You can use a soft so soft operation walls or a small port wall and a large port wall or a motorized wall so as to delay the operation or the time delay of operations so that it does not take in the big way or the velocity change does not happen very fast and the velocity shocks are avoided. Uh, then your sensor probes. Uh, we have a lot of temperature sensors now, these level sensors or the pressure sensors installed. Make sure that when you are removing the housing, you do not remove the sensor itself. Because many times the sensors, particularly pressure sensors or temperature sensors installed on a compressor or a vessel are directly connected to ammonia. So if you, when you are removing the electronic connector, electronic socket, do not remove the mechanical connection. These are all basically safety precautions common for all types of walls, controls and automations. I am just uh, giving a uh, few, few uh, tips in initially, then we will try to see on individual component wise. In installation, all the safety codes and standards must be followed. We are good, uh, it is glad now India has our own ammonia uh, safety uh, standard, ammonia electrician plant standard. It is available on BIS website. So please download it, it is free and try to use it as much as possible. Also there are a lot of AR handbooks available. I think uh, we have shared that installation handbook with all of you. Uh, and then there is another course design or the ammonia book is there, you can purchase it as well. AR is uh, not charging much for these books. So you can have these books in your uh, Custody and of course I will recommend that read it also. It's not only that I know many people they have the books but they don't read it. So please try to read these books also. Then this must be followed. Make sure that uh, every segment of refrigeration system, including control walls, uh, are field tested before charging ammonia. It means your complete plant must be pressure tested before you connect ammonia. That's the standard installation practice and we know we all follow. But what we use normally is the atmospheric air. What our co contra contractor does, he just dis removes the uh, discharge side, uh, correct, suction side of our compressor, suck the air, uh, atmospheric air and put it into the plant for the pressure testing. So this air, uh, making our atmospheric air also has a lot of moisture in it. And that moisture comes in our plant. When he vacuums or removes that air, the moisture remains in our plant. And that moisture slowly, uh, when you start, when you charge the ammonia, that moisture gets mixed into the ammonia and your anhydrous ammonia becomes hydrous ammonia. What happens is when you have a hydrous ammonia is that this possibility of uh, sludge formation, rusting, and of course <coughs> it will choke your walls, expansion walls, filters, and damage your compressor, oil damage will be there. So make sure that you use uh, either nitrogen, dry nitrogen or uh, if you are having, you want to use air only, so you should make sure that you use the dry air for the pressure testing. Then uh, make sure that your temperature pressure limits whatever the mention for each component, each uh, equipment your system is not exceeded. Ronika Sir talked about compressor, but make sure that this is applicable to all, all equipments in the plant. Uh, and uh, another important thing when you are installing walls and controls, make sure that there is sufficient space available. Space available to, uh, for the servicing or the future maintenance of the walls. Secondly, do not, do not stretch any walls or their client joints or connections uh, or pipes to make the align or uh, you know like join them. As in many times the pipe is little bit short, so they uh, the uh, installer pull the pipe and then try to do the welding. He says that once it is welded, it will remain. No, that stress will be there and it will lead to continuous leakages. I have seen it happening in many cold storages that after six months, eight months, every time there is a leakage and then you have to open and service the wall. So make sure that there are no stretches are available. Uh, whenever you have these uh, flange bolts to close a large gap, do not use, uh, you know, just bolts long bolts to uh, close the gap between the plant joints. It has to be a properly gasket <coughs> and do not distort walls by pulling those bolts. Uh, when you are having uh, flange type walls, when there is a gasket involved, make sure that gasket is lightly oiled. It is, it is, it is covered with the oil before putting it into the flange joint. 
many times the gasket is not oiled. People use the dry gasket, and you, uh, you observe that after five months, six months, or maybe three months. So they don't get leakage when there is air. Air testing or the pneumatic testing has been done. But when your ammonia is charged, and after maybe three, four months, you find the uh, ammonia leaking from those uh, gasket joints. So make sure that those gaskets are lightly oiled. Then all these uh, uh, flange stocks must be aligned with the grooves in the walls or component properly. It means when there is a, a bonnet of a wall which is connected uh, to the uh, main wall body, uh, there is always a, some uh, tong is there provided with the wall in the bonnet. It should be aligned to the groove in the wall body. Don't try to put it hard or just by tightening it. Don't try to make it. Make sure that wall is properly assembled. And uh, another thing, make sure that your components are not assembled in such a way that your material handling equipment, uh, trolleys, or your forklifts damage, uh, uh, go and hit them and damage them. And when you are installing your components, make sure they are not, uh, if there is ice built up onto them, make sure that they are not, uh, like you know, walls should not be installed too close to the uh, panels of the walls, so that when there is ice built up on the wall, the, uh, it will get connected to the panels and there will be a formation of a big block. So make, make sure these things are avoided. Provide access to all the components for maintenance. It means your components must have easy access to attend them, service them. So you can provide some ladders or the shades uh, or your uh, walkways to go. I have seen in some plant in Philippines I have been visited to one very big uh, meat processing plant and to go to the wall station, there were around 120 wall stations and to reach several wall stations, we have to literally walk on the pipes. So make sure that there is a proper uh, staircases or the uh, walkways are created to reach those things and operator when he's servicing in case of any accident, he can easily come out of it. The individual walls, controls, components must be provided with isolation walls. That's a standard installation practice so that you can isolate them, you can pump them out proper pump out the uh, drain walls or the, are provided safety walls. Uh, when, remember when you want to service or uh, maintain any wall, the ammonia or the refrigerant inside it must be totally drained. You cannot, you cannot or you should not open wall with refrigerant charge, refrigeration, uh, refrigerant inside. If you have, unfortunately, you have a system in which you, by operating a uh, stop wall, your system is going to generate a liquid trap. Make sure that such walls are always open and there is a proper tag out or the tag, uh, tag is provided on the wall. So, so that if anybody tries to operate the wall, you should know that by closing the wall, you are going to generate a liquid uh, trap. And as I told you, the liquid refrigerant must be removed before closing the walls or before opening the walls. This can be done by uh, drain points, particularly for large size of the walls. You will find there is a lot of uh, drain points are provided. So make sure that the refrigerant is drained from those walls before you, the service, open those walls. And of course, uh, when you want to service any parts, as I was telling repeatedly, remove the refrigerant from it. Make sure that control sticks are not open when removing the liquid. It means uh, when you want to uh, operate a control wall or the or so electrically shut off walls, make sure that wall is properly closed. Don't keep that wall functioning and like electrically charged and then open it. Because it will create, it may have a liquid flow in it and then that wall will, if you try to open it, you will have a liquid coming out of it. So in a normal case, the shut-off walls typically must be either open or uh, closed. Do not, do not, do not keep the shut-off walls in a 50%, 60% or a regulating position. If you want to have a regulating function, use regulating wall. But do not use shut-off wall as a regulating wall. It must be either fully open or fully closed. Particularly nowadays, a lot of walls are available with the threaded bonnets. 
uh, industrially, internationally, all the walls used are the flange bonnet walls. But nowadays, uh, to reduce the cost, some people introduce the threaded, uh, threaded bonnet walls. So when you are operating those walls, even when you are operating those hand wheels or the servicing those gland, make sure that those threaded uh, parts are not removed or those are not loosened. It may happen that uh, while trying to open the wall, the threaded parts will get loosened up and then uh, ammonia will leak. So this is a very important aspect when you are uh, servicing such kind of walls. Whenever you are uh, want to uh, particularly maintain certain uh, equipment, certain vessels, make sure that proper compound process is followed. First thing is that you must have your own process of how to compound the system. It must be written down on what is called the standard operating procedure, and then by using the necessary PPE kits, necessary uh, equipment, supporting staff, you must do the compound system. When you are uh, working particularly on uh, any wall, make sure that those areas are provided with the lockout tags. Like any any area you want to operate service, you uh, make sure you are operating uh, lockout tags are provided in those equipments. And uh, any person who is attending that, he should have a supporting and observing staff with him. What it means is that if one person is working, there must be another person available who will be looking at his work, observing his work. If he is making a mistake or if unfortunately there is a uh, possibility of ammonia leakage, he can jump in and pull that paper person out. Secondly, when you are having such uh, parts which are being serviced or open, make sure that those parts or the walls nearby, the uh, controls nearby are uh, properly marked. So if unauthorized person walks in who doesn't know about it, he will not open or close that section. And uh, third part is that electrical connections in that area must always be switched off. Make sure that electrical connections are not connected or switched on when you are servicing into uh, any of the area. If we have the silk uh, cap type walls, when we are opening such caps, uh, do it very slowly. Make sure that there is a release pressure. Is if there is any liquid or the pressure is released into that cap, it is removed. It is released before opening the caps. So when we talk about uh, refrigeration plant walls or the hand operated walls, contributes the major volume and it also contributes the major uh, leakage uh, points. So uh, typically what we have is the, those components which are, are the stop walls, stop check walls, blow walls, uh, 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 hand regulating walls or the hand expansion walls and of course the, uh, the, these are the main component walls. The stop walls can be very tight, uh, uh, nowadays, uh, earlier days most of the stop walls used to be flange types the leakage through the flanges and the leakage through the glands was a very common phenomena. Nowadays we have the weldable walls available. It means the work body can be welded directly into to the pipe. So uh, it avoids any leakages between the flanges. So you can look for this kind of a walls. And uh, this is a better choice. So you use this kind of walls. Then uh, nowadays these stop walls are provided with the back seating arrangement. It means when you open the wall fully, the CPU, the back wall, wall has the, uh, there is a, uh, this uh, seat will close the wall at the uh, uh, top so that you can service or open the gland and your liquid will be flowing through the wall. And when you are having uh, areas where you don't need to frequently operate the walls or walls are exposed to the atmosphere outside, you can use the cap type walls so that nobody can tamper with the wall and any small leakage can remain trapped into the cap itself. Uh, one important aspect when you are selecting the walls, uh, particularly I always want to look at the straight and the angle type walls. Many times we use a straight or the globe wall with a, uh, and then there is an immediate bend. So instead of that, consider using an angle type wall. It will save on one bend, two bend joints, and most importantly, if you see, the angle type walls has a higher carry factor. 
it means there is a more wall flow from the same uh, underneath wall of the same size as compared to the straight wall. It also means that there will be less pressure drop in the angle type wall as compared to the straight wall. So what we are here really having here is we are saving on the angle, one bend, the two weld joints and the pressure drop across the uh, bend is also saved and then we have a lesser pressure drop in the wall. So when you are uh, designing, changing your walls or when you are making layout for your walls, we'll have a presentation on the layout, make sure you consider this angle type walls and straight type walls depending on your application. When you are using expansion walls, nowadays there are different types of expansion devices are available. So make sure you select the uh, large cone or the small cone walls depending on your requirement. Uh, when you have a higher pressure drop requirement, use a large cone, uh, like uh, this is a small cone wall at the longer uh, tip so that you have a more pressure drop. But when you are using for the lower pressure drop or any type of complex systems, use a, la a more, uh, large cone wall uh, with more opening areas. When you are installing the walls, walls must be installed as per the manufacturer guideline. Particularly, the walls can be installed in horizontal or vertical line, not the upward line. This is not, not, not allowed. <coughs> Sorry. So this this normally is, uh, has to be done to avoid the hydraulic shocks uh, for when you are having those uh, wrong, wrong side of the wall. So make sure you follow those guidelines given by the manufacturer. The uh, wall flow, uh, liquid flow, normally uh, most of the manufacturers will show you for the flow direction. But make sure that your liquid pressure is applied on the walls here, wall seat, not on the top side of the wall, not from this side. <coughs> so you can see, uh, depending on your uh, liquid flow, you select the wall direction. When you are installing this uh, weldable walls, remember you are welding the wall body directly, not the plank. So, <coughs> sorry, remove the uh, uh, wall assembly completely. Do not weld the wall with the wall, wall assembly in line. Make sure your assembly is totally removed and then only you weld the pipe. When you are assembling the wall back, make sure you uh, follow the star pattern and all the parts inside the wall when it was removed, the PTAP uh, ring gaskets, everything is clean, gasket is not damaged, make sure that gasket is lightly oiled and uh, tighten the uh, boards using a star pattern like this and this cross patterns and then follow the torques provided by the manufacturer. Do not, in the, while operating the walls, do not uh, use, uh, you know, uh, those F spanners. In old days, the S F spanners were very popular. Do not use it. Nowadays, you can operate most of the walls by using the hand. When you are maintaining gland of any wall, make sure that your wall is totally back seated. And then you can remove, remove the uh, gland and uh, by using a proper spanner, uh, by, by you remove the hand wheel, you remove the gland, you can service change the wings or the uh, roof inside and then you can again service the wall. You can see here, this gives you more clear picture about back seating. How the wall by back seat. Back seat means there is a seat provided in the piston. So when you open the wall fully, this closes the wall. So there is no ammonia going upwards. The ammonia will not leak to the outside and you can open your wall. I will not go into detail about assembling and details. You can, uh, when you get these presentations, you can uh, read it yourself. If you want to replace those, if there are some walls which are provided with the balls. If you want to replace, open the wall, take the bolts out or remove the cone and you can replace uh, by the, uh, again putting the ball, uh, balls back and the cone. Make sure you have your all uh, drawings of your components with you. So in case of future spare requirements, you can have, uh, you know everything what is happening in your product and you can order individual components. But you don't need, if you have installed a weldable wall, you don't need to order the complete replacement wall. You may order a simple cone or a simple blank for a service part. 
So those things can be uh, recorded and maintained. Now let's, uh, in our uh, refrigeration systems, we have uh, two types of systems which are most popular. One is the gravity field system and another is, uh, uh, another what we call as the pump circulation system. In gravity field system, there is a liquid in the liquid reservoir or the receiver and that liquid is circulated by the pressure difference between from high pressure receiver to, uh, to uh, our evaporator side because of the pressure difference. In the typical evaporator side, we will have a level control and sunlight assembly to maintain the liquid level into the evaporator. So, uh, in all these assemblies that you see, when particularly we are talking about, to avoid liquid stroke coming, Buranika sir has explained to us, and we will have a more about compressor maintenance and services, to avoid liquid stroke coming to the refrigeration plant, and to make sure your evaporator has, is 100% flooded, so that there is only uh, gas going to the compressor, you need to use these level control systems. I will try to explain some of the level control systems available in the market. One option is having a float and the electronic control where there is a float ball moving in the coil and the inductance is uh, changes sense by the electronic controller. There is another one with the mechanical float switch which has got a electromagnetic switch here. So the level goes up, the switch operates and you get the feedback. And normally these level controls are combined with the solenoid walls to operate the uh, liquid supply condition. This is, this is similar to our float ball we install into our uh, water tanks at the home. So that uh, when there is a level, the uh, flow stops and when there is a drop in the level, the flow starts. So when, uh, why we want to control the liquid level? Then, uh, uh, I think we'll have more about compressor issues, but I'll just try to see. Make sure that our evaporator is maximum flooded because as Murani Karas sir has told us that when there is a liquid in the evaporator, it evaporates and converts into the gas, we get maximum, we get maximum heat transfer. That means if our evaporator is flooded with more and more ammonia liquid, it means we will have a more e efficient uh, refrigeration system. And if there is a more gas into the system, it means we will get less heat transfer and our efficient, efficiency will go down, it will increase our power capacity. Uh, of power consumption. So to get best heat transfer, we must have a flooded evaporator, but our compressors are gas compressors. Liquid cannot be compressed. So if liquid goes to the compressor, it damages the compressor. So what we want to do is to separate uh, the gas and the liquid and only gas go to the compressor to avoid liquid going to the compressor or what is called as a liquid stroke to the compressor. Of course, if we, our uh, plant is running at a uh, better uh, flooded system, it means we are operating at uh, rated conditions, we will have a uh, less wear and tear of compressor, less wear part consumption, less oil requirement and uh, our running order hours will be reduced and uh, it will save energy, it will also save our uh, plant operation, uh, maintenance cost and the pressure shutdown cost. So when you want to install the level, normally there will be some markings, drawings provided by the manufacturer. You make sure it is, uh, you follow them. And uh, since those, uh, mostly the uh, level controls are installed on a liquid separator, make sure that your the liquid level inlet is connected to the liquid side and the outlet is connected to the gas side. So when the liquid comes into the float chamber, it boils out uh, and it, when it boils out, the gas goes out. The electronic controllers can be mounted recommendedly. I always actually personally recommend to insulate the flow chambers. Not many people do that. Uh, because if there is a properly insulated flow chamber, there is a less boiling of the liquid and you get far more superior level. Also, uh, follow the drawings provided by them. Uh, I will try to show some of the installation drawings and photos because we have a limited time available. This is a flooded, flooded evaporator uh, system with a horizontal accumulator and uh, shown are the arrangements for it. This is typically for the uh, vertical accumulator. This is for a bunker coil in our potato coil storage. Bunker coils are very, very popular. They are mostly used for a slow cooling of the potatoes. And this, I have visited uh, some cold storage very much my last visit. I found the similar system is used for the onion storage. They are maintaining uh, 
so again same condition of a potato like uh, 0 degree room temperature and a 70 degree uh, RH and they are maintaining uh, potatoes for uh, 6 to 8 months Onion Onion, sorry onions. Sorry, onions So similar arrangement is used there also uh, You can have, uh, particularly if your bunker points are nearby you can use one accumulator to share uh, between the two uh, In chiller applications, if you have a PHG chiller uh, with accumulator you can install this controller. Make sure that levels are maintained, the, the, the control the float chambers are installed in proper way so that you have, a, like this is a PHE, this is a float you are maintaining level so that your liquid is, your evaporator is continuously flooded and your uh, only gas goes to the uh, system. As typically when you are installing float, do not install these points horizontally. Make sure you have the little bit slope here. So there is no gas or the air bubble trapped. There are many applications where these credit systems are used. I am just running through it because of our time does not permit us to talk more in detail. But if you have any questions, we will definitely talk about it. Maybe after the break or maybe during the lunch break or if the time permits on the question answer sessions. This is uh, like a uh, specific arrangement for a plate ice machine. You can uh, do a hot gas defrosting. This uh, ice, are the, uh, ice is released, uh, harvested by using hot gas, and uh, uh, your uh, uh, ice is generated in plate ice machines. Uh, in IBD separators, particularly ice bag tanks, are used as a thermal storage devices in dairies, breweries, and other applications where the ice is accumulated on a coil and you will have flooded systems. So, uh, so, if you see, there are so many applications of these flooded systems, uh, right from small ice block ice plant to cold storages to food processing industry to different uh, specialized components. This one, this is the specific design and installation in uh, like what we call as the Varaspati ghee manufacturing plant. So, it really uh, you must make sure that uh, when you are having an air. Uh, uh, this is a liquid trap or the suction trap installed into the larger cold storage yes. so that if unfortunately in spite of having all the control arrangement you have still liquid coming into the uh, suction line you can uh, evaporate it and not allow it to go to the compressor intermediate vessels interstage coolers Vladi Kassar talked about it so make sure that your floats are level controls are installed so as to maintain a proper level to, uh, so that your evaporator is flooded but liquid does not go to the compressor. Always use proper strainers or filters what we call as they are one of the most critical elements. It can be in a vertical horizontal line, it can be in, uh, they can be installed uh, under type or the straight type or the flange type. Do not install it other way around. It will not work. You, you can install it horizontally, make sure that there is sufficient space available to remove those filters. The filter meshes should be uh, stainless steel. Make sure that when you are buying those filters, you, may, you specify your supplier that filter mesh must be stainless steel. So that it can be clean and reused. If you use normal st uh, steel uh, filter meshes, the, with the water in ammonia, they will get corroded and damaged and you have to buy, frequently buy them. But if you use stainless steel filter mesh, it will be easy to just clean and use it. And for uh, specific applications, you can use pleated type filter meshes where the uh, area is around six times more, the filtration area is more and pressure drop is less. So what size of the filter mesh I should use? This chart will tell you uh, depending on your the location of the strainer or the filter, you can use different meshes and you should select the meshes accordingly. When you are using back pressure walls, follow the manufacturer's instruction guidelines. Typically, a back pressure wall, uh, the head is rotatable and it can be rotated in 360 degrees. So, you can change that as per your uh, end of the installation. Your applications are available. You can use, uh, depending on your application in the cold storage or a dairy, you can use it as a evaporator pressure regulator, you can use it as a differential pressure regulator, 
you can use it as a outlet pressure regulation, particularly if you are having the hot gas defrosting systems. It can be used with the electric shut off and the pressure regulation or electric shut off and or pressure regulation application. Different applications are available. The manufacturer will provide you the installation drawings, combination drawings. Just follow that. These are some of the examples you can see here. It is installed as a back pressure regulating wall on a chiller system or into cold storage uh, system uh, or into the intercooler uh, uh, of a screw compressor. So you, you can use them as per your requirements. Just make sure that you follow. Uh, this is the wall I was talking about. This is a differential pressure wall typically installed between the pump, uh, pump system on the pump header to the uh, LP vessel. So in case of any liquid pressure increasing between the pump uh, outlet to your liquid evaporator intake line, this one will immediately release the pressure to the uh, LP side. And those li possibility of liquid hammer, liquid uh, uh, getting trapped or liquid uh, will be avoided. When you are installing these walls, the, uh, make sure that this install horizontally in proper line the, the, the some distance must be maintained. Do not put immediate bends onto the wall. Typically, depending on the diameter, you should have at least at least uh, six times a straight distance between the wall and the next bend. As I told you, the manufacturers will give you the directions on how to use these walls. Like you must use it in horizontal wall line only, not in the vertical or the upside down. The combinations, the uh, when you are servicing, opening the wall, the uh, Top uh, calculations are the, uh, given. So make sure you are fo following all those things. In, in ammonia pumps uh, systems, uh, you uh, we talked. Uh, we'll talk about it little bit. You make sure that all the controls and walls are installed because this is the most important vessel. This is going to decide the uh, life and the function of your plant. If your LP vessel is able to maintain proper liquid, proper supply, proper liquid, and uh, some separate the uh, liquid and the gas, and only the allow only uh, gas go to the compressor, your plant is going to work fantastically. Because this is also going to help you to remove oil going into the evaporator side. Your level is maintained. You have a proper liquid uh, liquid feeding to your system, and your all plant works well. So make sure that your all controls and walls are installed properly. Typically, uh, level control, uh, control wall can be installed at 40%, around 20% you can have a low level and around 50 to 60% you can have a high level alarm. It can be similarly applicable to uh, vertical uh, pump vessels also. Uh, and then there are many, many walls are available for your requirements and applications. Uh, like uh, the uh, automatic flow regulating wall, what Brunnikar sir told you that in pump uh, pump pumping system you are having only the uh, uh, expanded liquid going into the evaporator side. There you don't need to expand it again, so you don't need to use the hand expansion walls or the hand degrading walls. What you need to install is a constant flow wall. Constant flow wall will provide a flow going into the evaporator and constant flow, irrespective of variation into the inlet flow. So, depending on your applications, you can use them in, uh, like you can install them outside, it is better. Do not install the walls inside the room. Better install them outside, uh, maybe on the wall side or onto the attic area. Make sure they are properly insulated. You know, particularly the written walls, please do not use them uninsulated. Because this is going to cost you energy. Uh, I'm just going through some of the applications of when you are having a liquid fed uh, uh, oil feed systems. Uh, uh, typically, even then nowadays, block ice plants are also made with the liquid overboard systems, whether it's pump ch uh, PHE chiller systems or the ice bank, or the ice bank tanks, plate freezers. These all are there. Another aspect is the hot gas defrosting systems. Hot gas defrosting controls are available and uh, different types of controls are used. So you make sure that you use the correct controls at the correct positions. Like I was telling you, I'm using a two-step wall so as to avoid uh, velocity shocks uh, are, are very important in your wet return lines of the hot gas supply lines. 
So I'm just going a little bit fast because of the time given to me. Sir, how what to what is time? Already 10 minutes extended. Okay, sir. I'll, I'll try to finish in 5 minutes. So, you can do fertilized defrosting in gravity bed systems, in uh, overfeed systems. Make sure that their proper piping has been done and installation is done correctly, provide uh, sufficient space to attend it. You can prefabricate, design and prefabricate into your uh, factory rather than doing it on site. So you can make a completely fabricated uh, equipment in your uh, factory and just install it. It is easy to do it. But make sure there is a sufficient space available for insulation and servicing of these components. And then uh, when you are using safety walls, always use with the dual manifold and uh, do not use any uh, uh, stop wall before the safety wall as Veronica has already talked about it, so I will not go into it. Follow the AR standard, typically it is 1773 when selecting the safety walls. Make sure they are replaced and calibrated every year, replaced every 5 years. Do not let your safety get released into the atmosphere, but make sure you have a proper safety ventilation system and connected into the uh, 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 so that uh, it goes above any window or nearby area at least by 20 feet so no person will get exposed to this ammonia. Use the uh, dead man walls or the spring loaded walls when you are draining the oil with a stop wall so that if there is in case of any ammonia coming out of this uh, if the hand is released on this wall, wall will automatically close and there will not be any uh, gas coming out of or ammonia coming out of it. Do not use simple glasses here, the glasses breaks. Use proper type of uh, level gauge so that there is no ammonia liquid coming from it. I think sir, I will stop it here because my, I have a lot of presentation but the time given to me is limited. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.